All right. 2-3. As mentioned, uh, a lot of Greek symbols are going to start coming up. They are in the alphabet, uh, upper and lower case. Some, they kind of mean the same thing. It's just some of the, I guess, uppercase maybe you haven't seen before. Uh, a lot of the words that we're going to have today, you already know what they mean. Uh, they're just going to be given some different symbols to work with them. For example, the word measures of central tendency, you know those three already. It's the three Ms. Mean, median, and mode. I mean, you know what those are. It's not that hard. Basically, it's the sum of the data entries divided by the number of entries. That's actually quite straightforward. Okay, again, average. But there, as you can see underneath, I have population mean and sample mean. That's where different letters are going to be used. Right? Remember, population means you have everybody. Sample means is you only took a portion of it. And let's face it, which one happens more often is, is sample. We talked about that enough. I think you get that idea. Uh, the two formulas are very similar with different letters. Uh, that right there is kind of looks like a U. That is mu right? equals sigma x. Remember, sigma means sum. And then it's divided by a capital N. Uh, the capital N is the number uh, that you have. And remember, that would be the population in this case. You know, if it some of them we had were there was a thousand students and that was it and so then that would be a thousand or if we took a sample of only 20 well that would be when we do the sample okay. but when we have a sample instead of using mu we use what's called x bar you should have a bar over your x there a little line that's all it is it's almost like it it's a segment in a way but it's x bar is what it's called it's really the same thing. It's still sigma x, add up all the x's. But now we're dividing by lowercase n because now that n just means the number of people or number of things. But the capital N versus lowercase n tells you if it's population or sample. Okay. And same thing with mu or x bar. Big difference. Okay. So make sure you note that difference right now in your head or maybe up to the side. I tried to show you here. Really, it's the same formula, just slightly different notation. Any questions on that? Right. So the price in dollars for a sample of room air conditioners is listed. Uh, they did have the same BTUs, but I didn't think you needed to know that. All right. Determine the mean price of the air conditioners. So why don't you go ahead and do that right now? Add them up, which would be sigma x, and divide by n. And then I'm going to ask you, what are you giving me? Are you telling me mu, or are you telling me x bar? What's that? Oh, never mind. Yep. Yeah, we're going to use the same numbers for various um, problems. All right, what'd you get for your total? For your sigma x, yes. You trailed off. What'd you have there? Three thousand. Thank you. So that's sigma x. Will we be dividing by capital N or lowercase n in this problem? Yeah, lowercase because this is a sample. Okay, this is not all the air conditioners in the world. All right. So. Or if it was just from a particular company, we might be able to do that as well as a population. So seven, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is correct. So that's your sigma x divided by seven. So we are getting mu or x bar, x bar. So in this problem, x bar is basically take 3590, which is sigma x divided by n, which is seven. And I'm assuming we're going to have to round a little bit here. Yes. 512.9. We'll just round there. That's fine. And what does that mean in this particular problem? $3. Yeah, $512.90 is the average price of those. Okay. 
hopefully the $840 one has some bells and whistles or some energy saving features to make you pay more for it. Okay. It's just shiny. Oh, it's just shinier. Is that what it is? It could be, I suppose, but I'd rather doubt it. All right, so any questions on that? The difference between mu and x bar. Median. This one's a long one. You can definitely paraphrase this one because I know you all know how to do it. Uh, the middle data entry, where the data set is sorted in ascending or descending order. Normally, we do ascending. Uh, if the data set has an even number of entries, the median is the mean of the two middle numbers. And you've done that so many times before in the past. Uh, you don't necessarily even have to write a definition down if you don't want to, because I'm sure that you can all remember how to do that. So of course, we, we should order them first. And so what is the smallest number 420 all right followed by 440 that's really weird but there you go now what if you have multiple 440s yep still have to keep writing them all right and what's next 470 480 500 840 And the easiest way to do it, pick one off from the front. Back, back, front. So how should we have known we did, wouldn't have to take the average here because we don't have an even number of entries. If you have an odd number of entries, it's actually easier. So here the median is $470. So that differs from the mean by quite a bit, actually. Okay. Perhaps you already know why. And this one, mode, I think there's a nice, easy phonics way of remembering this one, mode and most, right? The data entry that occurs with the greatest frequency, of course, would be the terms we would use in here, or most. And what is the mode, for example, one? 440. Now, what if there was only one 440? Yeah, no mode, very good. Okay. What if there was another, so let's say 440 was back in there, let's say there was another uh, 470. You'd write them both, very good. That would be called bimodal, because okay. there's two bimodal, two modes, get it? All right. Okay, so those are pretty straightforward, correct? Especially when you have very few numbers, it's very easy. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, on example four, I'm going to set you loose on your own here. Determine the mean, median, and mode for the following sample ages of a class. Which measure of central tendency best describes a typical entry? So that might be an interesting question. So why don't you take some time to do that? All right, let's see how you did. What'd you come up with? Well, probably the easiest one is mode, right? And you can tell right away, seeing I ordered it for you, mode in this case is 20. And basically, sample ages. So you're going to find x bar. That's what again? What's the word that you know that as? Mean. Mean, yep. So basically, sigma means add them all up, divide by how many you had. And what did you come up with? Twenty-three point seven five. Okay, I believe that is x bar, and median. Twenty-one point five. And the nice thing is, is I did have them in order, right? Now, if I didn't give you the numbers in order, right, it takes a while to take care of that, right? Okay, so let's show you another way where you can get all that information real quickly, and that's on those graphing calculators. Let's show you at least one thing you can do on there. If you don't have one, go grab one. They're in the filing cabinet back there. I'm not sure about the Inspire yet. I haven't messed with that too much, but I'm sure it's very similar. So you have all those numbers, right? So I can go here and do this. And I've already entered them. That's what I went and did when you guys were working on the last example to save myself some time. Now realize you don't have to enter them in order. You can enter whatever order you get them in, you can enter them. Right, so that's kind of nice. 
Now, if you had to take a wild guess of which button we're going to be hitting here, yeah, probably stat, all right? And what that allows you to do, everybody ready? I think the 84 has the same one, right? It's right in here. I think the 83 has it in the same spot, okay? So it's stat. What we're going to do is we're going to edit the entries, all right? Now, I've already done it. You notice edit here is the very first option, correct? Obviously, look, you can even sort them ascending, sort them descending. You can clear a list out of there, uh, all sorts of things. But basically, let's just go ahead. And what I've done is notice there's L1. That's called list one. And all I've done is I went through and I put in all the numbers. Okay? That's nice when they're not in order. You can just sit there and just keep entering them. So you hit 20, enter, 20, enter, 20, enter. And you keep going. And you go on through. And obviously, this keeps going. You know, there's more numbers down there. Right? I entered them all. So get them entered. And this, again, is, is more helpful when they're not in order. Because let's face it, it probably didn't take you very long to do those two problems or those three questions. And you may notice I have some stuff in list two. That's okay. I have stuff in list three that you know, maybe that's okay too. Because we're only going to refer to list one here. And this is a nice time saver for you know when you get more stuff. Oh yeah, actually the inspire, if you guys have the old keypad in there, we'll work the same. The new keypad, not so much. Now, you do have to make sure that you put the correct number of entries in there, but the nice thing is, is where we're going to go, it's going to tell us how many entries there were, and we can tell if we're wrong. We know how many are there. There's 20, right? And so if we messed up, we can tell quite quickly. Okay. Has everybody entered their list? Everybody's good? Okay. Now, we could sort it, but obviously this one's already sorted, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's just quit out of there so you don't go second mode. Again, this is kind of your calculation screen when you get back to here. And what we're actually going to do is go back into stat. And now we're actually going to calculate something. So what would probably be a place to go? Calculate, which is the second one over. So you just have to hit the right arrow. And how many variables do we have right now? We have one. It's just that number. Just It's the same thing each time. The number changes, but it's measuring the same thing each time, right? That's how many variables you have. So one variable stats, that's what we would like. And now it's asking, and see how it's blinking there. It's asking of what? And we want to do of list one. Do you see right here above the one? There's L1 in the blue color. So for me, it's blue. For you, it's that goldish or yellow, orange, whatever you want to call that. They're, they're starting to fade on some of them. But for me, it's the second button is really what it is, OK? So second, and then you hit one. Now it's going to say, do one variable statistics of list one. That's what you're telling it to do. Isn't that what I want? Yes. So go ahead, hit Enter. X bar, there it is, 23.75. Uh, summation of x, look at that. It added them up for you. Look at that, it even added the squares for you. Down here, you're going to learn what these two are, the big capital S. And then this is, you know, well, that, that's lowercase. That's sigma, really, that little weird looking thing there. Uh, it's just sigma in a different case, right? uppercase, lowercase. Uh, N, 20. Look at that. It's even lowercase n. See how they keep the symbols the same here? It's kind of nice. They didn't have to do that. They were smart, too. So do we think this is probably right? Eh, we got 20, right? Probably. Now, what about median? Well, just keep going down. There's the minimum. There's, ooh, quartile 1. Ooh, that might be helpful. Oh, median, otherwise known as quartile 2. You all know that. And quartile 3. Oh, look at this. All this max. All this information right in there. And really, we didn't have to do anything except enter the data. Okay? So it did a lot for us. And believe it or not, after the sum of x squared here, the sigma there, these other numbers will prove important as time goes on. Right? They will be very important to us. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay? So that's kind of nice. Just wanted to show you that while we were here. Now, this isn't actually a program that we're in right now. This is just a display. This is what comes up when you run the program. So if you want to get rid of all this, you don't have to quit because you're not in a program. All right, you just clear it. And do you understand the difference between being in a program and just having it display it that way? All right. So back to where we were. That was fun. All right. Yeah, that's what we got. So a weighted mean. Uh, this is done a lot in grading, actually. Uh, you know. I think more in college things get weighted than they do in high school. I know I don't do any weighting necessarily directly, but I think some of your science teachers do. Right? A weighted mean can sometimes be a little bit more complicated to calculate, but there's a nice little formula for that. 
basically all it is is the mean of the data set whose entries have varying weight, like some things are more important than others, I guess is one way you could look at it, or they are weighed more towards your value. Like here you got test scores and stuff. Some are weighed more than others. And if you had to think of how to do that on your own, you might struggle a little bit. But it's really not that hard. Okay. And again, I'm trying to, as I'm doing this, I'm trying to get you used to the symbols so that they're not so scary. Okay. But of course, the joke is, as you can say, it's all Greek to me, and technically, it mostly is. So x bar, it's still a mean, right? But now we are going to sum, that's the sigma of x times w. So whatever the score, that's what x here is like the score, times whatever the weight is. Right? And then we're going to divide by whatever the, the total of the weight is. This particular problem, the total of the weight is going to be quite simple. It's not always going to be. Okay? The weight. Okay. okay, so we have a very good example right here. Uh, it says your class, uh, which you are, you know, uh, that's, you know, just pretend that's not space there. Grade is determined from five sources, 50% from the test average. So you take all your tests and average them together, and that's uh, what 50% of your grade is. 15% from your midterm, 20 from your final, 10 from computer lab work, and five from your homework. I'd say this is roughly a good college distribution right here. And that's if you even get anything from homework. Right. Your scores were 86 for your test B. Notice I just did that for you instead of giving you all the tests. I think we can all find averages by now, right? So your average test score was an 86. Your midterm did pretty good, 96. Final exam, uh, not so good, 82. Did really well in the computer lab, though, 98. And you did all your homework, or at least you handed it in. Who knows if they corrected it? At least you handed it all in. So the first thing we want to do is figure out, well, what are the weights? Well, for your test mean, well, what weight are you going to use? Are you going to use 50%? Or when you take percents, how do you use those in calculations? You put them as decimals. So, as you know, 0.5, right? So your midterm, the weight, where's midterm on here is 0.15, right? Because it's, you take that percent and put it as a decimal. And 0.2, I think you get the idea. Now, why did I say our sigma w is so simple in this particular case? Yeah, it's 100%, right? I mean, it's easy. So sigma w, you add them all up, it's 1. It's very simple. So now all you have to do is says to sum up x times w. So it'd be good to take x times w, then I can sum them up. So take 86 times 0.5. That's a pretty easy one, right? Hope you didn't use the calculator for that one. 43. Now we got to take 96 times 0.15. That's understandable. And you keep doing that. And I'll let you finish that up. So what do we got there? 14.4, 16.4, 9.8, 5. Again, hopefully you didn't use the calculator for that last one. If you did, it's okay. We got a total of 88.6. Now, sometimes it won't be this nice. All right, for some, you know, if you weight things differently, it might not come out to 100%. It usually does for the problems we're going to do, but it might not. So obviously we would have to finish this. To do x bar, we would have to take that sigma right here and divide it by that, well, that's pretty simple. Dividing by one is very nice and easy. So your grade in this class, whatever 88.6% equates to. 
that also depends on professors normally. So again, not too bad. If you notice I've been using a lot of tables to try and organize the data. I strongly recommend that whenever possible. Okay. Questions on that? That wasn't too hard. To approximate the mean of a sample from a frequency distribution can kind of be a pain sometimes. Once again, oh, look at that x bar. We're just going to sum x times f. f is what again? Frequency. X is whatever your particular thing does. As here it says, in this case, X is the midpoint of the class, okay, which is why we did some midpoint stuff earlier. So if we use this frequency distribution, obviously, you know, that would be a pain to take 12.5, you know, and do all this. It could be a pain if you actually went back and did all the work to all of them. So all you have to do here is basically saying take X times F. That's why I made a nice column for that, and then we're going to add it up in the end, right? And so that's all you got to do, and we're going to divide by whatever N is. Do you remember this problem from before? This is the internet usage. Do you know what n was? Yeah, it was 50. Okay. It was from example. This might have been even from chapter one. Right here. So now you got to take x times f. So the first one, 75. That's what I got. Hope you don't need the calculator for that next one. 245. Some of the other ones are a little harder. And once you multiply a few, you can kind of just look up here. I'm sure you can all multiply. I don't think that's the end of the world. We don't need to sit there and multiply all day. Again, if you want to put extra lines in yours, it's fine too to organize your tables. But according to this formula, to get the mean or x bar, I have to sum or take sigma of xf and divide it by n. Anybody have sigma on this one? Yeah, we do. That's what I got. 2089. But that's not the answer to the question. That's not the average. Yes. Ms. Piper. So she took 2089 and divided by 50. And what did you get again? 41.78. Now we have to look at the data and see if that's believable. Does that appear as to about where the average would be? 41 range somewhere if you look at how frequent things happen. Let's face it, we didn't expect 85 to come out of this. That's not going to be the average of this data. All right. You know, 12 is not going to be the average. Somewhere kind of right in there was going to be the mean. And I'd say 41, yeah, that's definitely believable. Again, 60, maybe not so much. So what was it? 41.78. Sounds good. Now Shapes of distributions. We're going to start talking about certain ones here pretty quick. Uh, but for right now, we'll just talk in general about these. There's a symmetric distribution. And basically what that means is if you kind of went like this, see how the two sides are? You could fold it up on that line. And it's going to be perfect, right? Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's really, really close, it's fine. All right? Uh, and this is one that one of your other teachers talks about a lot. All right. Uh, in fact, we're going to be talking about that really soon. But you notice that in this one, the mean, the median, and the mode all right in that same spot. Right? Now, this one over here, uniform, you probably understood that uniform. A lot of people don't understand like when you have a basketball uniform so that you all have the same form, one form. Get it? OK. And that's why you're not supposed to look different and have different things on, OK, because it's supposed to be one form. You notice that they're all pretty much the same. The mean and the median is in there. Where'd the mode go? Oh, very good. Go or, or you could say they're all tied either way. Um, but basically, this technically is a special type of that one, isn't it? Just a very specific type because it is still uniform and it's still symmetric. All right. So those are two. Let's face it, the symmetric one's probably going to be the one we spend a good deal on. 
but we will also talk about these as well. Skewed, left or right. Obviously, I think you can kind of, what's that? Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, basically, they decide that, now some people might say that this one on the left should say skewed right, because more information seems to be on that side. But they kind of look at the tails. Where's the tail longer? And when I say tail, I mean, if you look kind of at the middle, do you see how this tail over here is much longer than that one? So it's skewed left. And another way to look at it is the mean is to the left of the other data, to the left of the median. Or over here, you notice the mean is to the right. And again, it's skewed that way because that particular tail is longer. Okay. So I would suggest that you take caution when telling me which one it is because you're going to want to say the opposite of how they've been named. Well, until you've got it all figured out, thinking opposite might work, but then you might reverse yourself on it. So just think of which way is the tail longer and say it that way. Okay. Now, I let you off the hook for a second on this one because I showed you the calculator. Which measure of central tendency best describes a typical entry? So wait, what was the mode on this one again? 20. Mode was 20. So if you look at this one, and just were to take a typical entry, right? There's a lot of entries there. We got some 20s and some 23s and 24. Which one would you say best describes a typical entry in this case? I mean, obviously, every case, it changes a little bit. And if, you give me, if you're convincing, <laughs> you could give me almost any of them. Did you want to say? Mode? OK, I heard mode. Any reason behind that? Okay. And it doesn't have to actually be an entry, but I like the logic behind that. You know, that's good. He's saying a typical entry, you know. And he's saying that the mean is not even an entry, so that's that's not good. So that's that's not okay. Okay, so the argument here was that the mean actually uses all the data instead of just maybe where the mode uses maybe only a few bits of data. But in this case, it uses, what, six of them, right? So that's a good number of them that it uses this time. But the mean does use them all. Does the median use them all? Yeah, so why not median? So the argument here is that mean would typically be a good measure of central tendency. Remember, that's what we're doing. What's a typical element? But in this case, yeah, 65 does kind of throw the mean off. So in this case, maybe median's better. But in the long run, you would want to go with one of them that at least uses all the data. All right. And yeah, in this case, it might be median. You know, but I think you gave convincing arguments as to why it uses all the data or you know, wasn't an entry was very logical. Okay, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'd say in this particular case, if you take 65 out of there, I think the mean becomes a much more typical entry. Okay. But the median in this case still still holds fairly well because it doesn't it gets rid of outliers. So. Oh yeah, definitely. As long as you gave me a convincing argument, I'm good. Right. Exactly. Another one is how do you define typical? Okay. But it was just to get you to think. And I got the answers I wanted. Uses all the data, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. It's good. Outlier. And it's trying to get you to think. I got the answers I wanted.